the first page. Divided. Diversity versus imbalance in college football conferences today. Key metrics, heat maps to conference expansion plus strategic thinking. There you can see uh, the Pac-12, all the various backgrounds of the Pac-12, all the various mascots or pictures, Heisman Trophy, money, whatever. And off to the right, is that the Washington State Cougar? Yeah. With the shovel? Yeah, I don't know why he has a shovel. Yeah. It is a shovel? Or a, the agricultural schools, I'm assuming. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So now what he's, what he's done here, he's looked at schools that are in the Mountain West. Now, this is the second page. Quick reference, heat maps give us useful glance at how conferences compare to each other. Uh, there are three metrics. Looking at quick data from three metrics. Institutional, market potential, athletic program. Green's good. Yellow's in the middle of the pack. And red is not good. And you can see, these. this is the Mountain West to kind of just give you an idea of where they are. Like the Air Force Academy, the 28th ranked uh, academic rank. Um, and then you can see where there's some green and there's a lot of red. For example, AAU member across the board, no to any of them. Uh, and there's, th th there's a bunch of data, all right? Look at the individual, that near the bottom, the fifth from the bottom, NCAA team titles, there are a handful. In fact, San Jose State's got 10. To lead the way now go to the next page and it kind of explains again quick comparison heat maps three sections metrics highlights per conference institutional academic resource metrics market size fan base metrics athletic department size and success then you go to the conferences page four all right big 10 pac 12 acc sec big 12 american mountain west mac and ivy league You see where the Big 12 is? Not a lot of green. Academic ranks, Texas, of course, the highest ranked of all the Big 12 schools. Go down from graduation rate to much more. This is comparing the average conference metrics, shows a general parity across the uh, A5s. Most of those colors are the same. Of course, Ivy League is not one of those. The next page is page 9 that highlights the Big 12. Texas, you can see why, no matter the struggles they've had in football and for on and off men's basketball, look at the green down that row. Academic rank all the way to everything. Else. There's a reason they feel the way they do about themselves. They're really damn good. There's a great school. And there's not much green. Now, Oklahoma would be next and among some others. Baylor holds its own. Brigham Young holds its own. And what they're basically looking at or the various things about academic institutions, but also at the bottom, there's a lot of uh, where it comes to fan size ranking, and then, of course, what they've done in athletics. <clears throat> so when you lose the first two, which you're going to do, the next in line, if you look at looks like success, would be Brigham Young. From academics to even fan size, population, and then, of course, what you do with some of the things you do ac athletically. I, I mean, it's interesting, especially when you look at the end of that, like UCF, which is a, you know, a, a very large school, but they're still trying to get to these things. I would say that if you, if you want to do like an animated graphic uh, over the next five years, yes. UCF is probably going to move up, move up considerably on these rankings because of what the, the resources they're dedicating things, but this is right now. And so, yeah, right now, I mean, again, it, Texas... Texas pumps a bunch of money into everything. It's not just sports. Yeah, no, you're so, exactly right. So they, they should have success in everything. Huge endowment. Also on top of that now, and this is, listen, they have taken a beating because of some of what's happened with football, among others. But you can also see their frustration, whether you like it or not, of who they are compared to everybody else. Go to the next page. Uh, no, that is that it? Uh, uh, Jack, just skip the Ivy League. Okay. Uh, go to page 12, 13, excuse me. Now, while the Big 12 is one of the best mixes of metrics for stability, Texas stands out, shows why it likely caused some friction. It's a have against the have-nots. And then you look at the new schools coming in, like you mentioned UFC, uh, UCF and Houston, among the others like Cincinnati and, and Brigham Young. 
Among the new Big 12, Oklahoma State has some of the highest sports metrics, including 52 national titles. Fourth on the list of all the schools in at least West Virginia 20 as a distant second. Among those who are remaining with the Big 12. But that does not include the schools that are starting to really kind of put things together, including, of course, what Houston's done, what Baylor's doing, and also in Houston's doing, and UCF as well, which could be a possible rising institution. Wow. Kansas State and UCF have never won a national title in anything. I, I would and not have known that. I would have just thought. Tech's only won that, two. Yeah, I, I would have, you know. And, and I, I want to guess, and if you're a Texas Tech fan, and we have some of you that are on the chat room, uh, isn't, would, would theirs have been in women's basketball, Cheryl Swoops, and I don't know, maybe there's also maybe in track and field track. or something like that. Yeah, because they have a great history. In I don't think they field. count meat judging. Yeah. At least I don't think he included yeah. meat judging on there. Yeah, they want a lot of those. There's, there's slides here. Yeah. Kind of like that. So, yeah, I think, it's tra- I think it was tracked yeah. like a year or two ago. So, there you go with that. And then, finally, this as well, the last one here. The new Big 12 has a very mixed, si- a likely stable set of institutions that may be much more cohesive than previous iterations. When you take Texas out of it and Oklahoma out of it, you're talking about two dogs now. On the broader scale, no school in the new Big 12 is a clear have or have not. And now you would like the argument, well, yeah, you need some halves. You've lost your halves. Some are trying to become that. Maybe never reach the level, realistically, of what Texas and Oklahoma are. But somebody has to rise to the occasion, whether it's one, two, or three schools or more, will rise to the occasion to replace at least to get somebody in that conversation. Well, you can't join Texas and Oklahoma because the game is rigged. (laughs) They're in a club that where the doors are locked all the time. Nobody gets into that club. You know, Clemson now find, finds themselves in that club after an incredible run, but some would have argued they were in that club already. So they already had one foot in the door. But for all these other schools, there's, you better go win like three national titles in football to even get an invite to the next party. So, I mean, the game is kind of rigged in that regard of, of the haves and the have-nots. The haves are going to remain the haves. The have-nots are going to remain the have-nots. And you might be able to make up a little bit of ground, but Texas could stop sports for the next 10 years and nobody's going to catch them still. It's just, you know, it's just it's different level. And, uh, you know, that doesn't translate necessarily into massive success because there's a lot of titles on there you could mention that nobody even has a clue that were even won because they're not sports that people really care that much about. And I'm not trying to take away, but, you know, um, yeah, there's a big hole to fill with Texas uh, leaving and Oklahoma as well, but that they created that hole. So, you know, Big 12's got to do what they got to do. Um, but, yeah, I think it's – Obvious to say that, you know, they're losing a lot with Texas and Oklahoma going out the door. They're losing their, their big brands and their blue bloods, um, and they're two members of the club. And now there are no members that are allowed in that club. So somebody's going to have to rise up and at least start banging on that door, and Baylor's got as good of a chance as anybody. Oklahoma State has an opportunity. You know, Cincinnati, name them. Um, who, who wants it? Who wants to go and be that team? Who wants to go that extra length and, and you know, be a part of that new wave um it's all there for the taking oklahoma state if you look at their column kansas if you look at their column a lot of theirs on the top part is as ad- educational uh, academic excuse me uh everybody's got a little green in there and then go to the page 15 uh, go, you were going to say go to page yeah, 15 jack I, I, you know I, that's right you don't have I, page 15. I think this is if you look at the new big 12 this is kind of an interesting look and this is much bigger than sports this is kind of a sociological uh, thing but if you take the half knots out the big, you know, and you could say this for society. If you took the billionaires out, what's going to happen? If everybody's on more of, a, of an equal scale, like who's going to be the ones who, but, who rise to the top? Now, you could make the argument that at least college football-wise and college athletics-wise, that Texas and Oklahoma kind of had their hands on or their, their foots on the, their feet on the rest of the Big 12, making sure that it didn't get bigger. Like they, they wanted... And again, Texas's economic model for when the conference started was to make sure of that, that they always stayed the biggest school and the most relevant, and there wasn't equal revenue sharing. So they were in a system that, that paid them to be just to be Texas and, and not even any kind of good or bad version it, of that. And it, yet they complained the entire time, yeah, which is bizarre. Like, I still don't understand that all the complaints from Texas and OU fans as though the Big 12 was out to get them somehow, but I guess every fan base has it, that paranoia. How long, which is longer, how long it takes you to get in the club or how long you have to not be very good to eventually lose your footing or table or seat at the table. Option A, because who's ever yep. lost their seat? Yep. Well, there's a few that are on the edge. 
Uh, no, Nebraska could go another 20 years. They're still going to be considered a blue blood because of what they did in the 90s and, you know, decades prior. Um, you know, that's just – it's it's the way that it is. Those certain schools are going to remain those certain schools, and every once in a while you might have a – like I said, a Clemson, but you could argue that they were already kind of – some already probably considered them in that club. Um, but whether or not they were, like, you look – it wasn't like they just won a national title and they were in there. They had, like, a sustained – juggernaut type run taking down Alabama you know on occasion to to get to that point and um you know elsewhere who's even close like I don't even know um I don't even know who would be you know approaching the driveway at this point because that you know it's just it's it's 20 something schools basically and you could even make it even less than that and it's the same ones that were the same ones 10 years ago and the same ones 20 years ago and the same ones you know and you get to a point where oh miami emerged in the 80s okay so if there's some miami type school that is gonna come out of nowhere but i don't even know who the the best bet on that would be but um yeah i just i don't ever think that um you're gonna have too many new entries so bottom line is you lost those schools so what um, you know, now you got to wait and see what that TV deal is going to look like. And you got to hope that it's not too much of a step down from what you had. And the only other thing that you can do about it is go out there and win some freaking games, go beat the Texas and the OUs in the opportunities that you have, go, uh, have a team that, that makes a run and gets into the college football playoff. I mean, that's, that's what you ultimately got to do, whether you're the conference or whether you're a school that's wanting to go and, and be a part of that club. You know, the only way to do that is to win. You can have all the NIL money in the world, but if you don't win, it doesn't matter. It's it's like anything else. It comes back to winning, and yes, money plays into it. And those same schools that are in that club, who has the most money? Those schools, right? Yeah. So, I mean, the, the game is rigged. The game really is rigged, but... Um, you know, a Baylor has an opportunity. I mean, having won a men's national title in basketball, they've been on the verge of the playoff now a couple of times. And if not for just a, a, a just a terrible game against TCU, might have been in the playoff last year. Might have been in there last year. But um, yeah, I mean, there's there's still a little bit of a red uh, velvet rope that people haven't been able to get past. But there's at least teams like Baylor that are approaching, at least trying to get past it, but just haven't had success yet. All right, when we.